So we all know the 4v5 matchup in the Western Conference first round this year will be the 5 seed Utah Jazz facing the number 4 seed Dallas Mavericks. This is actually a series that I think will be one of the closest in the first round as long as Luka Doncic can play at 100. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the series and who I think will win. First, I'm going to talk about the Dallas Mavericks side. Then I'm going to talk about the Utah Jazz side. Then at the end of the video, I'm going to talk about who I think will win and in how much games. Also, I just want to say I'm going to be assuming for the most part that Luka Doncic will be able to play the whole series. But before we get into the video, I ask you to drop a like on this video as it does help my channel grow. Subscribe to my channel if you want daily NBA content. Also, if you want to show over 3,000 subscribers, also drop a comment on this video as I do respond to all of my comments and play that intro. So to first talk about the Dallas Mavericks, in a series like this, I think we will really see how good Dallas' offense is. The Jazz are supposedly supposed to be one of the best defenses in the league, at least in the regular season, and Dallas since trading Kristaps Porzingis has been one of the best offenses in the league. The Mavericks obviously have Luka Doncic, one of the best offensive players in the league. He's a guy who could average a 30-point triple-double in a series. He's a guy who always steps up in playoffs. He's always, he's never had a bad playoff series so far in his career. For two consecutive years, he nearly led the Dallas Mavericks, which is a team that wasn't giving him that much help over the Los Angeles Clippers, who was a team that a lot of people had as their favorites to make it out the Western Conference. For being honest, this year's Jazz team is not better than the Mavericks, meaning that if Luka plays how he did against the Clippers, it's going to be really hard for the Jazz to beat the Mavericks. But the question that arises for me is whether or not Luka Doncic in a series like this will be healthier enough or not because we all know that guy injured his calf in the last game of the year and if we don't get the Luka who we all know and love who's like a superstar top seven player in the league if he's still hampered by that calf injury it's obviously going to make him play worse and Luka's health is definitely a huge factor in the series probably the biggest deciding factor in my opinion as he's the best player who will be playing in this series but outside of Luka the Mavericks have a lot of really solid offensive players Jalen Brunson is one of the most underrated guards in the league. He's a guy who could create his own shot, capable of going off for big games, a secondary playmaker. They also have Spencer Dinwiddie, who's coming off the bench. And ever since coming to the Mavericks, he's been a great, efficient scorer, could playmake. He's going to be really huge for the Mavericks coming off the bench. They're going to need his playmaking and scoring. They also have Dorian Finney-Smith, who's a good spot-up shooter who can occasionally attack the rim. And Maxi Kleber is able to return. He's going to be really useful as a big man who can actually space the floor and defend. Fenn. and overall the Mavericks just have one of the best offensive systems in the league they basically can exploit Rudy Gobert and I promise you I'm not on the Rudy Gobert hate train I don't think he's trash or overrated or unplayable I think the bigger problem is with the Utah Jazz's perimeter defenders who are some of the worst perimeter defenders in the league they don't give enough effort and they just leave all the work to Rudy Gobert but nonetheless I think the Mavericks will definitely take advantage of that playing smaller lineups and playing guys who could easily blow by the Mavericks from the Utah Jazz's perimeter defense by an open shooters and the tackle bear if I'm being honest their offense will be great but if Luka's not playing I don't know how amazing it's gonna be because he's their main facilitator but underratedly the Mavericks have won out one of the best defenses in the league and I think that's the biggest reason for them having their best season in a while the Mavericks don't necessarily have a bunch of great one-on-one -on -one defenders but Jason Kidd has incorporated a defensive scheme that has made them really good on that side of the floor and I think that could work a lot against a team like the Utah Jazz who are equipped with a crazy amount of shooters and I think this Mavericks defense will be able to close out on them really well the main problem I would see with the Mavericks in a series like it is that they have a lot of like not really good perimeter defenders like not saying they have a bunch of bad perimeter defenders but a lot of their guys are just average to slightly above average and when it comes to them guarding Donovan Mitchell they'll probably put Dorian Finney Smith on him who's a guy who I think could do a solid job but the thing with Utah is that a majority of their perimeter players are guys who create their own shot score off the dribble stuff like that maybe they could exploit the Mavericks defense one-on-one -on -one, but honestly I wouldn't be that worried since overall they're a good defense now talk about 
about the Utah Jazz. In a series like this, the key for them has to be their defense. We all know the Jazz have been one of, known as one of the best defenses in the league for like a lot of seasons, but it seems like in the playoffs, they always get quote unquote exposed. Every year, people blame Rudy Gobert, and if we're being honest, their defense hasn't really changed enough to where it would make me think that it would change this year in the playoffs. But if they want to beat this loaded Mavericks offense, their defense definitely has to step up. And honestly, as I said, I don't think it's going to be Rudy Gobert's fault. His role is to protect the rim. It's hard for him to be a versatile defender at seven foot. I think the problem is that Utah's premier defenders are simply not good enough. They're always getting beat. And in a series like this, they can't allow them to do that because um, the Mavericks, as I said, have a lot of shooting. And that's something that is in Utah's favor as well because the, Ma the Jazz are also one of the best three-point shooting teams in the league. Literally everyone they play except for Rudy Gobert is really good shooters. Like They have some elite shooters. These guys can hit off the dribble threes hit pick and roll threes they can run the pick and roll that's what makes this team on offense really good and they're really hard to defend because so much different guys can step up for you one night jordan clarkson can score 25 one night mike conley can score 20 one night bogdan bogdanovich can hit five threes you never know who's gonna step up and we all know the jazz have donovan mitchell who's a guy who goes absolutely nuts in the playoffs the jazz are actually lucky they have donovan mitchell on their team because playoff luka is a scary player playoff luka who might be the best player in the whole playoffs but playoff donovan mitchell is really up there and he's the one of the few guys in the western conference who i think could actually go on par with luca in the playoffs especially when you realize that luca is probably going to be playing with some type of injury but somewhat like a, a, another worry i have about the jazz is the fact that their coach in last season and Quinn Snyder was like shown an inability to make any type of adjustments even though the Clippers kept killing their defense with a small lineup hopefully this year he doesn't do that and hopefully he's ready to make adjustments but if he doesn't make any serious adjustments the Jazz will not win this series also the Jazz ended the year off terribly they're only they were only two games above 500 after the all-star break and in their last 11 games they were four and seven that's simply not that good and to be honest there has been some reports of some chemistry issues that's not something you want to hear going into the playoffs also since the jazz are the fifth seed in a series like this they will not have home court advantage meaning they're gonna have to play some games away and the jazz are not horrible away but they're still below 500 which shows that they're not as good there obviously that applies to every team but just, that's just a negative you never want to have more games on the road but overall you can't just sleep on the jazz you can't act they're not a good team they have a lot of flaws and exploitations but most teams do they're still one of the best offense in the league arguably probably the best student team in the playoffs they have multiple veterans who can step it up in a series like this and go off don't sleep on the jazz in a series like this but to answer the question of who I think will win the series, I'm going to have to go with the Dallas Mavericks to win it in seven games. Believe me when I say this, this was a hard decision. But I will say that if Luka Doncic is not at full strength, I think the Utah Jazz will win the series in six or seven games. But I think Luka is the deciding factor. The way I see it is that if Luka was able to push the Clippers all the way seven, all the way to seven games last year with the worst team that he has right now, I think him at full strength with a better team is definitely capable of beating the Utah Jazz with the way worse defense than the Clippers and way more exploitable defense on top of that. And honestly, over the last few years, we've always just seen the Utah Jazz fail and disappoint. So I'm not ready to put any type of serious stock into them winning, but I think the series will be really close because both teams can shoot the ball really well both teams have a star guard both teams have a lot of depth i think this is gonna be arguably the best first round series anyways guys that's it for the video let me know whether or not you think the dallas Mavericks can pull this off drop a like on this video to help my channel grow subscribe to my channel if you want daily nba content also if you want to go to 3000 subscribers also drop a comment on this video i do respond to all of my comments and play that intro